Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be continuing on again with the Atari 400 series that I started a little bit a little while ago. Um, I, I don't have many games left, uh, but this is a classic one, and so that's his Missile Command. Um, not been one of my favorite games, I have to admit. Uh, I did play it on the uh, Atari a little bit. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually played it in the arcade. Uh, it probably would have been one of those titles I would have walked by. Uh, I, I just didn't find it as fascinating as games like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and stuff like that. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, still, it's a classic game. And I do drop it into my Atari every once in a while, the 2600 version anyways. So I'm more familiar with this one. And this one, I haven't actually really played it. So um, this is going to be kind of my first time playing it. Not a big deal. I mean, it's not an overly complex game to play. Uh, it doesn't require the manual to understand it. Um, I don't have the manual. That's a problem. Most of these games I don't have the manual for. In fact, I think all of the Atari 400 games I don't have a manual for. But most of them I kind of understand what's going on. So let's play Missile Command on the Atari 400. Okay, let's play Missile Command on the Atari 400. Okay, so I was looking at the uh, different options and stuff. So we got the, the one-player game. Uh, and then we also have the Atari and bonus, which I'm going to find out what the difference is. Copyright 1981, so you can see this is fairly old. <laughs> Missile Command. Um, not overly exciting of a startup screen. You can see I got our base down there. We got the little cities and stuff that you need to save. So let's uh, let's get this one going. Oh, so it looks like we got an airplane type of thing going on there. That's our target. The object of this game is, I don't know if I was supposed to destroy that airplane, uh, is to stop these missiles from coming in and destroying our cities on the bottom here. I guess in the uh, smallest amount of ammunition used possible to get more points. Is that a satellite? I mean, the music is pretty good. Uh-oh, I, I think I just lost the city. The destruction sounds not bad. Definitely a lot different than on the Atari 2600. Let's see what happens if I blow this thing up. Yeah, I'm supposed to blow that up. As you can see, it's it's really just a lot of uh, target practice. I just lost like half my freaking cities right there. Another one of these classic games I've just never really been that good at. This is in Asteroids. Uh, be really curious to see how I do when I do the uh, PlayStation version of this game. I think you're supposed to like make them make the explosion happen just a little bit early. So you can see how it expands out, and th th that expansion will actually destroy the missiles. It doesn't always have to be an exact shot. Terrible at this one, though. I mean, it's okay. It's not bad. Graphically, I think, uh, I think maybe they could have done a little bit better. I mean, they could have probably made a better looking airplane, if that's what that is. I like the sound though. The sound's really nice. It's not really a music sound, or more of a whatever that satellite is. But the destruction of the the missiles. Yeah, it just got blown up. Got one one city or base, whatever they are, left. And I got some triangle guy coming after me. That ain't good. We really just got to focus on protecting that one city. Oh no, it got blown up. I'm doomed. Uh oh, that's gonna hit me. <laughs> yeah, I just blew up my. The end. Wow, that's a really big uh, end screen there. The end. 
So let's see what happens when I uh, do this bonus thing here. I don't know if anything will change. I'm going to blow that up, I'm going to blow that up, and I'm going to blow these things up. Oh. I have to remember that they kind of fork out after they explode. There we go. Something I wasn't noticing was when I shot it, it would divide into like other streams and I'd have to still go after those. Again, I don't know if I'm supposed to destroy that airplane thing or if it's like a good guy or what. Again, I don't have a, a manual, so... Most of these games, I mean, you can figure them out anyways without a manual. Not a big deal. I'm not seeing anything different about this version. Oh, no! Almost used up all my ammunition. Lost one city. tell this is the type of game that came out during the time where people were really worried about nuclear attacks. There's a movie actually uh, I remember watching about this the whole uh, fear of the nuclear nuclear attacks from say other countries like Russia or wherever and a lot of like movies and stuff were coming out. So I can see how this would be a popular game of the day, trying to stop nuclear attacks, or missile attacks. I don't know what that, that thing is, but I'm going to blow it up. Oh man, this really is spreading everywhere. <clears throat> I'm losing all my cities at once. This ain't good. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything different. Maybe it's just the way it scores. Something a little bit different there. Oh. I guess if you strategize, you can kind of plot out where you have to drop the missiles. I'm just kind of firing, trying to hit everything at once, but that's probably not the smart thing to do. I'm gonna run out of missiles. Oh. The end. Oh well. I tried. <laughs> That's neat. Didn't expect that to happen. Well, I mean, it's not the worst game in the world. Uh, but I, I still kind of don't find it the most exciting game. I know there's a lot of people that love this game. I've I mean, seen them on the, the Atari Age group on Facebook and stuff. You know, you, you see people through these retro gaming groups and they talk about this game and they love Missile Command. Um, and, you know, it'll be interesting. I, I do have it right here uh, for the PlayStation, which I will be doing a video on as part of my classic arcade series on the PlayStation. So I'll be very curious to see how this is this goes down. Um, I recently did uh, this one, Asteroids, and I was quite impressed with, with the way they were able to translate. And, and again, Asteroids isn't one of my favorites either, so I'm not good at it. And as you can see, I'm not good at this one either. I, I Even on the Atari, I'm, I'm not good at them. I, maybe it's just I'm not, I'm not figuring out the angles of the missiles or something. That being said, I think that this one actually was pretty decent. The sound was great. I like the, uh, I like the way the things were exploding. Um, you can really see the detail. You can see a little bit more detail in the cities. Um, I believe they're the cities. I think that's what you're saving. And your main missile command base. Uh, a little bit more detail, obviously, in the Atari 2600. It was a lot more blocky. Uh, a lot of it was the same color. 
but the gameplay was almost the same to me. It just kind of felt the same anyways. There wasn't anything really different about it. So that's why I'm going to be curious to see how the PlayStation 1 works and uh, to see if there's anything different about it. Anyways, yeah, not bad. I probably won't play it too often. Um, same with the, uh, the 2600 one. I'm not a big fan of it, so I probably won't be playing it. But let me know what you think. Are you a big Missile Command fan? Was this one of those games where you just played it and played it and played it until you pretty much rolled the score? Um, I'd like to hear that. And, uh, you know, what's your, what's your favorite port of it? I think it might have been also on the 5200. I could be wrong. Um, and probably on various computers. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe to my channel. Talk to you later.